In Hanoi, there has been an abrupt end to the second summit between the U.S. and North Korea. The president is speaking now. Let's listen. Reasonably attractive news from Pakistan and India. They've been going at it, and we've been involved in trying to have them stop. And we have some reasonably decent news. I think, hopefully, that's going to be coming to an end. It's been going on for a long time, decades and decades. There's a lot of dislike, unfortunately. So we've been in the middle trying to help them both out, see if we can get some organization and some peace. And I think uh, probably that's going to be happening. Uh, we have Venezuela, as you know, has been very much in the news. And we're sending supplies. Supplies are getting through a little bit more. It's not easy. It's hard to believe somebody would say, let's not do it. What? difference would that make, except it's great for his people to let it get through. But we're sending a lot of supplies down to Venezuela. People are starving to death. And you would really think that the man in charge currently would let those supplies get through. Uh, we are getting them into some of the cities and some of the areas that need them the most. And it's not an easy job. It's very difficult, actually. On North Korea, we just left Chairman Kim. We had a really, uh, I think, a very productive time. We thought, and I thought, and Secretary Pompeo felt that it wasn't a good thing to be signing anything. I'm going to let Mike speak about it. But we literally just left. We spent pretty much all day with uh, Kim Jong-un, who is, uh, he's quite a guy and quite a character. And uh, I think our relationship is very strong. But at this time, we had some options, and at this time, we decided not to do any of the options. And we'll see where that goes. But it was, uh, it was a very interesting two days. And I think, actually, it was a very productive two days. But sometimes you have to walk. And uh, this was just one of those times. And I'll let Mike uh, speak to that for a couple of minutes, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we had been working our teams, uh, the team that um, uh, I brought to bear, as well as the North Koreans, for weeks uh, to try and develop a path forward so at the summit we could make a, a big step, a, a big step along the way towards what uh, the two leaders had agreed to back in Singapore in June of last year. Uh, we made real progress, and indeed we made even more progress when the two leaders met over the last uh, 24, 36 hours. Unfortunately, we didn't get all the way. We didn't get to something that, that ultimately made sense for the United States of America. I think Chairman Kim. Uh, was hopeful that we would. We asked him to do more. He, he, he was unprepared to do that. Um, but I'm still optimistic. I, I, I'm hopeful that the teams will get back together in the, the days and weeks ahead and continue to work out. It's a very complex problem. Uh, we have said since the beginning uh, that this would take time. Our teams have gotten to know each other better. We know what the limits are. We know where some of the challenges are. Uh, and I think as we continue to work on this in the days and weeks ahead, we can make progress so that um, we can ultimately achieve what it is uh, that the world wants, which is to denuclearize North Korea, to reduce risk uh, for the American people and the people all around the world. Um, I wish we could have gotten a little bit further, um, but I'm, I'm very um, optimistic that the progress that we made, both in the run-up to this summit as well as the progress that the two leaders made over these past two days, put us in position to get a, a really good outcome. Uh, and um, the President and Chairman Kim both uh, felt good that they had made that progress uh, but couldn't quite get along the, along the line any further to make a deal that would have been bigger at this point. I hope we'll do so uh, in the weeks ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. All right, Major, please. Has this process been more difficult than you thought, and was the North Korean demand for lifting of some sanctions the real sticking point here in that you did yeah. not want to do that and they did and will it, there it was about third, the sanctions will I mean, there be a third summit mr president basically uh, they wanted the sanctions lifted in their entirety and we couldn't do that they were willing to denuke a large portion of the areas that we wanted but we couldn't give up all of the sanctions for that so we continue to work and we'll see but we had to uh, walk away from that particular suggestion. We had to walk away from that. Will all the sanctions that are currently in existence remain, sir? They're in place. Uh, you know, I was watching as a lot of you folks over the weeks have said, oh, uh, we've given up. We haven't given up anything. 
And frankly, I think we'll end up being very good friends with Chairman Kim and with North Korea, and I think they have tremendous potential. I've been telling everybody, they have tremendous potential, unbelievable potential. But uh, we're going to see. But it was about sanctions. I mean, they wanted sanctions lifted, but they weren't willing to do an area that we wanted. They were willing to give us areas, but not the ones we wanted. John? As we, as we know, I mean, there's an incredibly complex set of issues that are at play here in terms of lifting the sanctions and what denuclearization is. Right. Did, did you get any distance toward sort of what Kim's vision of denuclearization yes, is? Yes, Because we there, did. Is, there is, there is a, a lot of, of a line of thinking that he wants to keep some nukes. Yeah. I mean, would you allow him to do that? And if you well, can't... Well, I don't, I don't John, I don't get, want to comment. Excuse me. I don't want to comment on that exactly, but uh, he has a certain vision. And it's not exactly our vision, but it's a lot closer than it was a year ago. And I think, you know, eventually we'll get there. But for this particular visit, we decided that we had to walk, and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay? Oh, look, we have a gentleman nobody's ever heard of that was Sean Hannity. What are you doing here, Sean Hannity? Should we let him do a question? I don't know. Yeah, John, go ahead. With you. Yeah. So, it, if he wants the sanctions completely off and you want more on denuclearization, how, how can you bridge that gap between now and the next time you might sit down together? With time. It'll be bridged, I think, at, some, at a certain point. But there is a gap. We have to have sanctions, and he wants to denuke, but he wants to just do areas that are less important than the areas that we want. We know the, we know the country very well, believe it or not. We know every inch of that country. And we have to uh, get what we have to get, because that's, that's a big give. Yes, Sean, please. I work in radio and TV. The mic's on. Mr. President, thank you. Mr. Secretary, good to see you. Um, Mr. President, if you could elaborate a little bit more. Um, we have some history. President Reagan walked away in Reykjavik. A lot of condemnation at the time, and it ended up working out very well in the end for the United States. Was this mostly your decision, or and how, what would message would you want to send Chairman Kim as he's listening to this press conference about the future and your relationship? Well, Sean, I don't want to say it was my decision, because what purpose is that? Uh, I want to keep the relationship, and we will keep the relationship. Uh, we'll see what happens over the next period of time. But uh, as you know, we got our hostages back. There's no more testing. And one of the things, importantly, that Chairman Kim promised me last night is, regardless, he's not going to do testing of rockets and uh, nuclear. Not going to do testing. So, you know, I trust him, and uh, I take him at his word. I hope that's true. But in the meantime, we'll be talking. Uh, Mike will be speaking with his people. He's also developed a very good relationship with the people, really, the people representing North Korea. Uh, I haven't spoken to Prime Minister Abe yet. I haven't spoken to President Moon, South Korea. But uh, we will, and we'll tell them it's a process and it's moving along, but we just felt it wasn't appropriate to sign an agreement today. We could have. I just felt it wasn't very appropriate. Yeah, Jonathan. Liar. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Thank you. Uh, two, two questions, if I may. Uh, first, did you learn anything new about Chairman Kim uh, through this meeting? And secondly, of course, while this was going on, the drama back in Washington, uh, your former lawyer, Michael Cohen, who worked for you for 10 years, his office right next to yours, right yeah. by yours at Trump Tower, he called you a, a liar, a con man, a racist. What's your response to Michael Cohen? Well, it's uh, incorrect. And, you know, it's very interesting because. Uh, I tried to watch as much as I could. I wasn't able to watch too much because I've been a little bit busy. But I think having a fake hearing like that and having it in the middle of this very important summit is really a terrible thing. They could have made it two days later or next week, and it would have been even better. They would have had more time. But having it during this very important summit is sort of incredible. And he lied a lot, but it was very interesting because he didn't lie about one thing. He said, no collusion with the Russian hoax. 
And I said, I wonder why he didn't just lie about that, too, like he did about everything else. I mean, he lied about so many different things. And I was uh, actually impressed that he didn't say, well, I think there was collusion for this reason or that. He didn't say that. He said no collusion. And I was, uh, you know, a little impressed by that, frankly. Could have, he could have gone all out. He only went about 95 percent instead of 100 percent. But the fact is, there is no collusion. And I call it the witch hunt. This should never happen to another president. This is so bad for our country. So bad. Uh, you look at this whole uh, hoax. It's a, I call it the Russian witch hunt. I now add the word hoax. It's a very, very bad thing for our country. But um, I was impressed with the fact that he uh, when you know, because the most important question up there was the one on collusion. And he said he saw no collusion. So we'll see what happens. But it was pretty shameful, I think. Uh, yes, ma'am, please, please. President Trump. President Trump. Go ahead. How about one of you instead of three? Well, actually, I do have the microphone, I guess, so... Um, right, well, excuse me, excuse me. The person in the front. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Not you. Excuse me. Yeah, we'll Sorry. get to you. Thank you. Thank you, President Trump. Um, Jane Tan with Santa News and Guangdong Television. What was the atmosphere like when you walk away from the negotiation table? And, and I think it was very good, very friendly. Uh, this wasn't a walk away like you get up and walk out. No, this was very friendly. Uh, we shook hands. We, uh, you know, there's a, there's a warmth that we have. Now, I hope that stays. I think it will. But uh, we are you know, we're positioned to do something very special. This has been going on for many decades. This isn't uh, me. You know, this was — this should have been solved during many presidential runs. And, you know, people talked about it. They never did anything. Uh, I get a kick out of so many people from past administrations telling me how to negotiate when they were there. In some cases, for eight years, they did nothing. But I think uh, the relationship was very warm. And when we walked away, it was a — very friendly walk. Mike, you might want to speak to that for a second. No, I, I agree. I talked with my counterparts as well. Um, look, we hope we do more, but um, everyone's very focused on how we continue to build on this. We are certainly closer today than we were 36 hours ago, and we were closer then than we were a month or two before that. So real progress was made. Um, I think everyone had hoped we, we could do just a little bit better. Uh, but uh, the, the departure was with an agreement that we would continue to work on what has been an incredibly difficult problem. Uh, both sides are resolved to achieve it, and uh, everyone walked away in that spirit. And may I add, um, you and Chairman King are from very different political system. You are from different generations. And um, what it's do you find? It's a very different system. I would say that's true. Well, how, would, how do you find you guys in common? Because we saw the atmosphere. We just like each other. I mean, we have a good relationship. Uh, yeah, it's a totally different system, to put it mildly. But we like each other. Good relationship. Go ahead in the back. Go ahead. Um, Mr. President. Do you think it was premature to have held the summit when the, all these things had not been tied down? I mean, in the White House schedule last night, it said signing agreement today. And I wonder whether, as a follow-up question, whether you, you could just sketch out what the next yeah. few months look like. Thank you. You always have to be prepared to walk. I could have signed an agreement today, and then you people would have said, oh, what a terrible deal, what a terrible thing he did. No, you have to be prepared to walk. And, uh, you know, we, there was a potential we could have signed something today. I could have 100 percent signed something today. We actually had papers ready to be signed, but it just wasn't appropriate. I want to do it right. I'd much rather do it right than do it fast. Uh, yes, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go. First. Go. Yeah. You have to speak up. Yes, and Oh, yes. I'm a reporter from South Korea, and I appreciate your effort to advance denuclearization in Korean Peninsula. And could you elaborate on the options and the various ways that you discussed with Chairman Kim to advance denuclearization? Could you specify? Uh, we discussed many ways, and uh, the denuclearization is a very important, it's a very important word, become a very well-used word. And a lot of people don't know what it means, but to me it's pretty obvious we have to get rid of the nukes. I think he's got a chance to have one of the most successful countries rapidly, too, on Earth. Incredible country, incredible location. You're right between, if you think of it, you have on one side Russia and China, and on the other you have South Korea, and you're surrounded by water, and among the most beautiful shorelines in the world, there's tremendous potential in North Korea, and, and I think he's going to lead it to 
a very important thing economically. I think it's going to be an absolute economic power. Yes, go ahead, please. Go ahead, yeah. President David Sanger from the New York Times. I know, David. Um, six months ago when uh, you spoke, or eight months ago in, in Singapore, you said if you didn't have something in six months, we should come back and, and ask you about it. In that time, you have seen um, Chairman Kim increase the number of missiles he's produced and continue to produce more nuclear material. And that's been a pressure point on you because He's showing that the arsenal is getting larger while this is going on. Well, some people, David, are saying that, and some people are denying that. Uh, they have uh, shots from above, way above, and some people are saying that, and some people aren't. Uh, but I could have taken that out today, but I think you and others would have said we didn't get enough for what we'd be giving up. So, and I, you know, don't forget, we're partners with a lot of countries on this, if you think about it, with the sanctions. We have a whole big partnership with the United Nations and many countries, including Russia, China, and others. And then, of course, South Korea is very important to this whole thing. And Japan, uh, I don't want to do something that uh, is going to violate the trust that we've built up. We have a very strong partnership. So can you just give us a little more detail? Did you get into the question of actually dismantling the young gun complex? Yes, absolutely. And does he seem willing ultimately totally. to take all of that out? Sure, totally. He does. He just wants all the sanctions off first. He would do that, but he wants the sanctions for that. And as you know, there's plenty left after that. And, and I just felt it wasn't good. Mike and I spent a long time negotiating and talking about it to ourselves. And just I felt that that particular, as you know, that facility while very big, uh, it wasn't enough to do what we were doing. So he was willing to do Young Gun, but you wanted more than that, I assume. We had to have more than that, yeah. We had to have more than and that. So you because there are one. other things that you haven't talked about, that you haven't written about, that we found. And we have to have. That was done a long time ago, but the people didn't know about. Including and the, uranium, brought, we, including yeah, the second we, uranium enrichment plant. Exactly. And we brought many, many points up that I think they were surprised that we knew. But we had to do more than just the one level, because if we did the one level and we gave up all of that leverage, it's been taking a long time to build. So he and was, I want to take, he was by not way, willing to take out that second. That David, second. I want to take off the sanctions so badly, because I want that country to grow. That country has got such potential, but they have to give up more. We could have done that deal. Mike, you want to speak to that? No, only, uh, only David. There are also timing and sequencing issues that were associated with that as well, which we didn't quite get across the finish line as well. But remember, too, even that facility, even the Young Beyond facility, uh, and all of its scope, which is important for sure, still leaves missiles, uh, still leaves uh, warheads and weapon systems. Um, so there's a, there's, there's a lot of other elements that we just couldn't get to. And the listing of all of them. which Yes, sir, and a, and a declaration associated with all of those things. We couldn't quite get there today. That's right. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify, when you talk about what you would be willing to give up all of the sanctions for, right. are you still thinking that you want North Korea to give up everything to do complete, verifiable well, I don't want to say that before to you. you lift yeah. sanctions? Yeah, it's a good question. I don't want to say that to you because I don't want to put myself in that position from the standpoint of negotiation. But, you know, we want a lot to be given up. And we're giving up. And we'll have to, you know, we'll be helping them along economically, us and other, many other countries are going to be helping. They're going to be in there. They're prepared to help. I can tell you Japan, South Korea, I think China, so many. And speaking of China, we're very well on our way to doing something uh, special. But we'll see. I mean, I, I am always prepared to walk. I'm never afraid to walk from a deal. And I would do that with China, too, if it didn't work out. Are you concerned if you're not able to reach an agreement that the testing will start again or that in, that while all of this time well, is he passing said the by, testing, con yeah. continuing to develop their program? He said the testing will not start. He said that he's not going to do testing of rockets or missiles or uh, anything having to do with nuclear. And all I can tell you is that's what he said, and we'll see. Yes, go ahead, please. Go ahead, please. In the back. Red, in the red. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, thank you. Jessica Stone from CGTN. I have a question about China, as you were talking about. Um, you talk about China being willing, potentially, to help economically, and the fact that you've talked 
or we will talk to Presidents Moon and Prime Minister Abe. How would you describe China's role in facilitating the engagement that's happened so far um, between Pyongyang and Washington? I think China has been a big help, uh, bigger than most people know. On the border, as you know, 93 percent of the goods coming into North Korea come through China. So there's a great power there. At the same time, I believe, I happen to believe that North Korea is calling its own shots. They're not taking orders from anybody. He's a very strong guy, and they're able to do things that are pretty amazing. But 93 percent still come in from China. China has an influence, and China has been a big help. And Russia has been a big help, too. As you know, there's a pretty small part of the border, but nevertheless significant, about 28 miles. And things can happen there, too. And they've been a help. Yes, go ahead, please. Thanks, President. Jen Chen with Shenzhen Media Group of China. Um, in your meeting with Chairman King this morning and yesterday, did the topic of China come up? If so, what can you share with us today? And you probably will have the end of Mar-a-Lago um, summit in March with Chinese President Xi Jinping. What would you like accomplished with your agenda regarding China at that time? Thank you. We did talk about China today a lot. And he's getting along with China, and so are we. And we are, uh, you know, we're, we're right now, you look at what's happened to our country. We've picked up trillions and trillions of dollars of net worth. Our stock market is almost at its all-time high. Our economy is incredible. Our unemployment numbers are among the best we've ever had in our history. Individual groups like African-American, women, uh, you just take a look at any group, uh, Hispanic, you saw that, just came out, the best in history, African-American best in history. So many different numbers are coming out so good. So we have the strongest economy, probably, possibly, that we've ever had. Uh, Fiat Chrysler just announced that they're going to spend $4.5 billion right next to Detroit and Michigan. They're building a tremendous plant. It's actually an expansion of, of another plant. It's going to be, it's going to double up their jobs and even more than that. A lot of great things are happening. And with China there, having some difficulty, as you know. But I think that a lot of the difficulty is because of the tariffs that they're having. And in addition to that, we're putting a tremendous amount of money. You saw trade deficits went down last month. Everyone was trying to find out why. Well, we're taking in a lot of tariff money, and it's going right to the bottom line, and it has reduced the trade deficits. So we'll see what happens with China. I think, I think we have a very good chance. Their, uh, their numbers are down, but I don't want that. I want their numbers. I want them to do great. But we've been losing anywhere from 300 to 500 billion dollars a year with China for many, many years. And again, like other things, many presidents should have done this before me. And nobody did. So we're doing it. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Me? Right here. This gentleman. Uh, Chad O'Carroll from NK News, specialist in North Korea News. Good. What's your message for President Moon, who has effectively reached the glass ceiling as far as inter-Korean cooperation is concerned due to sanctions? And what's next for U.S. ROK military drills? Well, I, I like President Moon very much. We have a great relationship. Believe it or not, I have a great relationship with almost every leader. A lot of people find that hard to understand, but I do. Uh, but some take advantage of our country like you wouldn't believe. And when, uh, when they know I know it, which I know in every case, uh, maybe it sort of freezes them up a little bit. But we do. We have a lot of good relationships. Uh, we'll be calling President Moon very soon, as soon as I get by the phone on the plane. And uh, he'll be one of the first calls. I'll be calling Prime Minister Abe of Japan, telling him about where we are and what we're doing. But I'll be making those calls. No, he's working very hard. President Moon is working very hard. He'd love to see a deal. And he's been very helpful. Okay? Thank you. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm Yang Sheng, reporter from Global, Global Times China. Uh, I would like to ask you that uh, what are you expecting China to do in the next step to mediate uh, your relationship with uh, North Korea? Thank you. Uh, to use China? Yeah, from well, we do. I mean, China's been very helpful. President Xi is a great leader. He's a highly respected leader all over the world, and especially in Asia. And he's helped us, uh, Mike, I would say he's helped us a lot, right? Yes, We've, uh, 
I've, I actually called him just recently to say, hey, you know, whatever you can do on this. But he has been very helpful at the border, and he's been very, very helpful with, I think, North Korea generally. Could he be a little more helpful? Probably. But uh, he's, been, he's been excellent. Go ahead, please. No, yeah, please. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe Allie next. That's okay. Uh, Your friends. <laughs> thanks, Mr. President. Um, could you, did you commit with Chairman King to, Kim to a next summit uh, during no, your we term? Haven't. No. Uh, no. Okay. We'll and see if it happens. It happens. It, I have not committed. They are at this point, some would say, a nuclear power. Do you accept North Korea as a, as a, a nuclear armed state, at least for the time being? And uh, are you thinking about reimposing um, the uh, military exercises with South Korea, or no. will you keep in a freeze? Well, for you freeze? know, the military exercises, uh, I gave that up quite a while ago because it costs us a hundred million dollars every time we do it. We fly these massive bombers in from Guam and when I first started uh, a certain general said oh yes sir we fly them in from Guam it's right next door. Well right next door is seven hours away and then they come and they drop millions of dollars of bombs and then they go back and but we would spend I mean, we spent hundreds of millions of dollars on those exercises, and I hated to see it. I thought it was unfair, and frankly, I was sort of of the opinion that South Korea should help us with that. You know, we're protecting South Korea. I think they should help us with that. So those exercises are very expensive, and I was telling the generals, I said, look, you know, exercising is fun, and it's nice, and they, I play, they play the war games, and I'm not saying it's not uh, necessary because it's some levels it is, but at other levels it's not. But it's a very, very expensive thing. And, you know, we do have to think about that, too. Uh, but when they spend hundreds of millions of dollars on those exercises and we don't get reimbursed, uh, we're spending a tremendous amount of money on many countries, protecting countries that are very rich, that can certainly afford to pay us, and then some. And, and those countries, by the way, and those countries know that it's not right. But nobody's ever asked them before, but I've asked them, and we're doing, we're gaining a lot of money. We've picked up over $100 billion just in NATO over the last two years. $100 billion more has come in. Uh, and we, we're doing that with a lot of countries. You'll be seeing that a lot. Yes, sir, please. Yeah, one second, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, you have a personal relationship, and I believe uh, Vice President Pence does, with the family of Otto Warmbier. Uh, I'm wondering, um, you've talked about this week's uh, about Kim Jong-un being uh, my friend. You called him on Twitter. You said you have a great relationship. Have you in Singapore or here confronted Kim Jong-un about Otto Warmbier's death? I have. Asked him to take responsibility. Have, yeah. and what did he say to you, and why do you call him your friend? I have, and I have, and I, we, I have talked about it. And... I really don't think it was in his interest at all. I know the Warmbier family very well. I think they're an incredible family. Uh, what happened is horrible. I really believe something very bad happened to him, and I don't think that uh, the top leadership knew about it. And when they had to uh, send him home, by the way, I got the prisoners back. I got the hostages back. And Otto was one of the hostages, but Otto came back in a shape that was not even to be talked about. Uh, I find it, I thought it was horrible. Now, the others came back extremely healthy, but Otto came back in a condition that was uh, just, are, are you, just terrible. And I will, I, I did speak about it, and uh, I don't believe that he would have allowed that to happen. It just wasn't to his advantage to allow that to happen. Those prisons are rough. They're rough places, and bad things happened. But I really don't believe that he was, uh, he, he, I don't believe he knew about it. Did, did he say, did he tell you that he did not, uh, did Kim Jong-un tell you? He felt badly him? about it. Did I he, did, did speak to him. He, he felt very badly. He knew the case very well, but he knew it later. And, you know, you got a lot of people, a big country, a lot of people. And in those prisons and those camps, you have a lot of people. And some really bad things happened to Otto. Some really, really bad things. Why, why are you willing but to he call tells him? me he tells me that he didn't know about it, and I will take him at his word. Uh, and, yes, uh, ma'am, go ahead, please, please go ahead in the back. No, in the back behind you. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Schwarzman Valentino, Sputnik News Agency. Uh, have you discussed the issue of possible inspections to North Korea nuclear sites uh, during your negotiations? You're going to have to you're going to have to speak a little louder. And mm -hmm. where, are you, you from? where are you from? 
Russia, Sputnik News Agency. Yeah. Have you discussed the issue of possible inspections to North Korea's, uh, North Korea's nuclear sites with, during your talks with the, cha with the chairman? Why don't you answer that, Mark? No? I can't. I, I, we, good. Inspections, inspections to nuclear sites. Sure. International oh, inspections. inspections, yes. Inspections on North Korea? Yeah, inspections oh, would be to able, the yeah. nuclear sites. We'd be sites. able to do that very easily. We have that set up, so we would be able to do that very easily. The inspections on North Korea will take place and will, if we do something with them, we have a schedule set up that is very good. We know things that, as David was asking about certain places and certain sites, there are sites that people don't know about that we know about. Uh, we would be able to do inspections, we think, very, very successfully. Yes, ma'am, please, please. Yes, go ahead, please. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. A lot of people here, by the way. A big group of people. Yes. Go ahead. Khan News Israel, Mr. Good. President. Good. Following this engagement with uh, North Korea, you're trying to bring peace to the Middle East. Right. Uh, the peace plan is about to be introduced in the near future, and as you have mentioned before... Well, we hope. We hope. We're working hard on the peace plan, and we hope it will I be... I believe produced. you do. But as you mentioned before, it will require Israel to make compromises to the Palestinians. As far as you know, is Prime Minister Netanyahu willing to make these compromises, which are very much needed? And the second question, Mr. Netanyahu is about to be indicted today in, with corruption allegations. Do you wish to tell him something on this occasion? Well, I just think he's been a great Prime Minister. And uh, I don't know about his difficulty, but uh, you're telling me something that, you know, people have been hearing about, but I don't know about that. I can say this that he's done a great job as prime minister. He's tough, he's smart, he's strong. He is uh, very defensive. His military has uh, been built up a lot. They buy a lot of equipment from the United States, and they pay for it. Of course, we give them tremendous, as you know, subsidy also. Uh, $4 billion is a lot each year. Uh, but uh, they are — they've been very, very good. They've been incredible, actually, in many ways. But there is a chance for peace between Israel and the Palestinians. And, you know, it's interesting. All my life, I've heard that the toughest of all deals, when they talk about tough deals, we all like deals, but the toughest of all deals would be peace between Israel and the Palestinians. Uh, they say it's like the impossible deal. Uh, I'd love to be able to produce it. We'll see what happens. You know, we were paying the Palestinians a lot of money, and I ended that about two years ago because they weren't saying the right things. And I said, why would we pay somebody that's not saying nice things about us and not really wanting to go to the peace table. And uh, they've been much better, and we'll see what happens. But, but I, I think Netanyahu we really — I think we have actually a good shot at peace between Israel and the Palestinians. Yeah, go ahead, please. Sir? Uh, Mr. President, I'm from China. My question is, do you see, still believe it is, it is possible that uh, the North Korea and the U.S. relation could be uh, uh, like the U.S. and the Vietnam relation in the future? Do you have to go again? Do you, believe, do you still believe that it, it is possible the relation between uh, U.S. and uh, North Korea in the, in the future could be like the uh, relation between U.S. and the Vietnam? Yeah, I think we're going to have, yeah, we have very, very good relations. Uh, and by the way, speaking of, you mentioned Japan, uh, we have a lot of good things happening with Japan. We have trade talks started. For years, Japan has been sending millions and millions of cars in. And as you know, it's not been a very fair situation for the United States. We're starting trade talks with Japan. They actually started about three months ago. And I think we'll have a very good deal for the United States. But that's been a very unfair situation. Prime Minister Abiy understands that, and uh, that's fine. Yes, sir, please, back there. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm Ching Yichang with Shanghai Media Group. Do you think the uh, ne next meeting could be soon or might take some time? Well, I can't tell you. I mean, it might be soon. It might not be for a long time. I can't tell you. I would hope it would be soon, but it may not be for a long time. I could have done, I could have done a deal today, but it would have been a deal that wouldn't have been a deal that uh, would have been something that I wouldn't have been happy about, Mike would not have been happy about. We had some pretty big options, but we just felt it wasn't appropriate. And we really want to do it right. Yes, in the back, in the back. Yes, ma'am, please. 
Debbie Edward, ITV News. At which point did it become clear to you that you wouldn't be getting a deal here in Hanoi? The language from yourself and Kim Jong-un was very positive last night and even this morning, and therefore was it a mistake to No, I think here? the language was good all throughout. The language has been good even now, but, uh, you know, I don't go by language because we had probably the toughest language in the history of diplomacy, if you call it diplomacy, at the beginning, and yet we became very friendly. Uh, I don't believe there was any tougher language ever than that. But again, this was something that should have been handled by other presidents long before me was that and long before they had the kind of power that they have. But it wasn't. It should have been done by many. I'm not just blaming the Obama administration, which, by the way, it did nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing on North Korea. It, uh, it allowed things that happened and to happen that were very inappropriate. But I'm not blaming the Obama administration. I'm blaming many administrations. Something should have happened. But I don't think the rhetoric's been bad at all. Initially, it was horrible, but now it's been very good. All right, one more. How about you? Go ahead, please. Please, go ahead. Go ahead. Good. Um, Channel A, Dongaebo, uh, South Korean media outlet here. I'd like to ask you, you said that we do not particularly know when they will be, North Korean leader will be willing to come to the table and take the actions that's been required. If that's the case, would the U.S. be willing to strengthen the sanctions and perhaps put the pressure on North Korea to move forward? I don't want to comment on that. I can just tell you this, that we have very strong sanctions. I don't want to talk about increasing sanctions. They're strong. Uh, they have a lot of great people in North Korea that have to live also, and uh, that's important to me. And I would say this, uh, my whole attitude changed a lot because I got to know, as you know, Chairman Kim very well, and they have a point of view also. So I don't want to really talk about that. I just think that hopefully for the sake of South Korea, for the sake of Japan, and frankly for the sake of China, I was talking to President Xi, who, who really is a man that uh, gets the respect of a lot of people. Uh, I say, you can't love having a nuclear state right next to China. And he doesn't. He really doesn't. I will he would like to see that problem solved, too. So that's it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to get on a plane and fly back to a wonderful place called Washington, D.C. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, fellas. Thank you very much. Okay, abrupt and a bit astonishing. The second summit between the U.S. and North Korea is over, ending earlier than expected. The president just telling the press corps, sometimes you have to walk. Uh, he noted he could have signed an agreement but felt it wasn't appropriate. He said, I'd rather do it right than do it fast. So as this summit ends, as the president leaves, as Kim Jong-un leaves now Vietnam, uh, we look at exactly what happened here. Some answers we still wait for, but Margaret Brennan, Ben Tracy here with us now. Margaret, your reaction to all of this right now? Well, I, I thought it was extraordinary that the president was as specific as he was. He told us that what Kim Jong-un put on the table was not enough. We knew that this one reactor, Yongpyong, which is well known, uh, was offered up by Kim Jong-un and said, you can have access to this site. The president said that's not enough. There's a second uranium processing plant we know about. There are other sites that U.S. intelligence has detected because North Korea's nuclear program continues and he said that that offer was not good enough to warrant lifting of sanctions that's as specific as we have ever heard the president be in terms of the asks and the sites that u.s has recognized um, that was extraordinary to have him say i think it's overstating things to say he's walking away from the table uh, because he is continuing to keep those diplomatic channels open at the working level. He is leaving, though, uh, with the bare minimum that he set, which is a halt to testing. The language here is important in the White House statements. It is, uh, that parsing, because he is, he's, he's trying to have it both ways, to say, I'm walking away as a tough guy saying what you offered is not good enough, but he's not yet ready to give up on the diplomacy. He's saying that the diplomats at the State Department who've been in the lead are going to continue to talk to the North Koreans. Ben, sanctions, sanctions, sanctions. Yeah, I'm going to be interested to see how the North Koreans position this because they have taken the unusual step of commenting on this summit in real time, even raising expectations that great results were going to happen here today. Great and historic. Exactly, and that has not happened. The sanctions part is interesting because if what the president is saying is what went down in that meeting, that the North Koreans came in basically said, relieve all of the sanctions. 
you have to assume that they went into the meeting knowing that that was not going to be a concession that the U.S. side could make, which then raises the question about how serious they are about these negotiations. And I've been told that there had been some progress on some of the, the softer issues, some of the things like we even heard in that extraordinary exchange today where Kim Jong-un took questions right. from Western yeah. reporters yeah. Yeah. and said that he would, you know, in, in entertain this idea of opening a liaison office, keeping those diplomatic channels open. So Kim Jong-un still walks away from this not isolated. He, he does have one win in his pocket, but he doesn't have the sanctions to bring home, and that is such a key thing. And he got this second summit. I mean, this is another huge moment for him in terms of his reputation. And for those who missed that extraordinary conversation between the president and Kim Jong-un and the press corps earlier, what Kim Jong-un said uh, was that he wouldn't be here if denuclearization wasn't a potential option. We have never heard him say say that part before. Uh, right. He was also asked about setting up some sort of um, U.S. operation potentially in North Korea, and he said it would be welcomable. That's for the translator, yeah. obviously, but still fascinating to hear. And, and it's, it's very specific here in, in terms of the technicals. The U.S. had pulled back from one demand, which was that inventory up front of all the nuclear sites. They said, okay, we can wait on that. But the U.S. still wanted to get in to monitor certain sites and get inspectors on the ground. Those very big things are what this hinged on, and the president didn't get those things, and so he's pulling back. Talk about Young Gun a little bit, how big, how big a deal it is or not. Well, it, it, it's a big deal. It is a major very well-known nuclear site and it's been uh, an older one though it, it is and it's been discussed and very much expected that that was what North Korea would offer up first um, as, as Ben has witnessed uh, firsthand there are sites that North Korea often deems not as uh, important to their program any longer and offers those things up as either we're going to destroy them or you can have access to them and what the president indicated with acknowledging that there's a second uranium processing plant is there are facilities Facilities, including underground facilities that U.S. intelligence knows about, that the North Koreans were surprised, as he said, uh, to know that U.S. intelligence knows about. Um, and so it, it was not important enough, Young Young, for uh, the U.S. to say, we'll give you some relief. Talk about your inside. Talk yeah, about and your that's experience. been the fear here is that North Korea was basically going to offer up things that they no longer right. need. So, you know, they brought all of, of journalists up to uh, their nuclear testing site. They made a big show of blowing up the entrances to the tunnels. But at the end of the day, North Korea said, we don't need to do those tests anymore. So they don't really need that site. So Yongbyon's a big deal. I think the devil's in the details. The president said they had put that on the table. The real question is, what did they put on the table? A full mm -hmm. dismantlement of that facility or a reactor or processing plants? The table was set at the working lunch. Literally, the table was set, <laughs> right? Literally. The food hadn't been served, but the table was set, and, and that's, when they, that's when they said no. Literally, and, and I think it is surprising in that while, you know, going into these talks, you did hear diplomats say, oh, look, anything is possible. The president can walk away at any time. No one really expected him to walk away because the president's language up to this point has been so positive in wanting this deal. There has been this internal sort of knife fight among uh, different forces within the White House saying, wait a second, pump the brakes on the diplomacy don't give in on some of these things. It was too much of a concession not to ask for the inventory uh, of, of sites and weapons up front. And it appears that today, at least, the president is siding with some of the more hardline elements within his uh, White House. But we'll have to see what happens. Who were saying this is a bad idea, don't do this right now. Who, who said this isn't a good, good enough deal. But to be clear, treading water is not a bad thing. Keeping a halt to missile testing and nuclear testing is something that the president said would make him happy coming out of the summit. And the president said that Kim Jong-un said we're not going to do that. Yes, Kim Jong-un has said that for a long time. I think we have to remind people that Kim Jong-un announced the end of testing before the Singapore summit. So that is not something that President Trump has gotten as a concession in these summits. It's something Kim Jong-un announced in his New Year's address. And he said, we don't have to do it anymore because we have completed our nuclear force. Whether you believe that to be true or not, that's his position. We heard the president announced the, the suspension of military activities in the last press conference mm -hmm. following Singapore, which, as you know, was a huge surprise to everyone, including the president's own people. Yes. Did we hear any of those surprises right here, right he now? He didn't answer the question on military exercises. He was specifically asked, are you are you continuing this freeze-for-freeze freeze idea that you're, you're going to put the exercises on hold? He didn't directly answer the question. So it is possible he has agreed to that. It is also possible he may decide to turn those back on. Um, you know, the I idea in the military is we want to be able to fight tonight, right? That's why they like that. The president went on, as he so often does, to talk about his annoyance at the large cost associated with the alliance that we have. This 
this is something that really troubles our allies in South Korea and Japan, that the president's language is so focused simply on the U.S. mainland and not on helping to protect them. They, they do want those, that readiness to be there and for the president not to be uh, aggrieved by the cost of, of standing by them and continuing these exercises. The president was asked about Otto Warmbier as well then, uh, as you just saw. Um, Otto Warmbier uh, was taken prisoner in North Korea, came back, he passed. Um, the president has spoken of his close relationship with Warmbier family, um, and he addressed that more here today. That was extraordinary. I, I don't know if the president realizes how much news he made with that, but he basically gave Kim Jong-un a pass on Otto Warmbier's death. He said that he doesn't believe Kim Jong-un knew about it, that rough stuff happens in prisons. Um, I don't think that's going to sit well with a lot of people back home. Uh, those comments in relation to Jamal Shashogi as well. I mean, when we talk about that and the president saying this person was not responsible, the leader of this country was not responsible, are there any echoes there, Margaret, at all? Well, giving a pass is the language Ben just used. I'd, I'd say certainly he's continuing to treat Kim Jong-un like his friend. That was the term he used the other day. He is not criticizing in, in very harsh terms he could use to accurately describe the human rights situation within North Korea right now and specifically what has happened to Americans. Something that he has again picked up on as you point out with Saudi Arabia. Uh, even when he was asked about is the Israeli Prime Minister who may be facing indict, indictment He's today. He's doing a great job. He's doing a great job and they buy so many U.S. made weapons. For the president he just he often equates power with money and that's the language he so often uses. It is very unusual to us when we are used to American presidents speaking about values and value-based alliances rather than, you know, transaction-based alliances. No answers about a potential third summit then. Yeah, the president basically said it may happen, it may not happen. Clearly, there are a lot of details they still need to work out. And what I'm wondering is where this really leaves South Korea. You have President Moon sitting there, you know, a couple of miles from the DMZ, and he was ready to go in terms of engaging North Korea in some economic projects. You have to assume that's all on hold until some of these other details get worked out. Well, he did say he was going to speak to him yes, right away. Yes, he was away. going to call him from the plane and uh, bring him up to speed on what happened. Meanwhile, as all this happens, the president, immediately after being asked about the summit ending was asked about Michael Cohen, who gave this That's extraordinary right. testimony. That's right. And, and just he yesterday. said this was extraordinary. I mean, if you think of the weight of this summit and the kind of detail you have to go to that negotiating table with, for the president to acknowledge that he tried to watch the televised testimony of his former attorney in the middle of this is truly extraordinary. Uh, you wouldn't think he'd be watching cable television um, when we're, you know, 12 hours ahead of. Eastern time yeah. zone when that uh, that testimony was happening. So the president made clear it is still very personal for him. Yes, he repeated a lot of things he said in the past about Michael Cohen being uh, an admitted liar, but it still obviously quite gets to him. You might not expect that, or, or you could expect that <laughs> in this particular case. Um, so much to digest here. Margaret Brennan, Ben Tracy, thank you both for your perspective on this. Uh, so to wrap up here, the second summit between the U.S. and North Korea um, here in Hanoi, Vietnam, ends abruptly. There was supposed to be a working lunch. It did not happen. The president just held a news conference. He said it's better to walk um, without a deal than sign a bad deal. But there is no deal for now, and we don't know if or when there will be a third summit. We are going to have much more on the summit, on your local news, on this CBS station, on our 24-hour streaming service, CBSN, and, of course, later on CBS This Morning. And we'll have a complete wrap tonight on the CBS Evening News from Hanoi, Vietnam. This has been a CBS News Special Report. I'm Jeff Gore. For news 24 hours a day, go to cbsnews.com.